What's going on, investors? AK here bringing you the noise where we analyze the market and business news that you need to know. Let's go! Today we're going to measure the current risk premium in the market. We'll take a look at risk premium spreads and see how much longer this bull market has to run. But before you continue watching, make sure you go back and review our video that explains risk premium spreads. I'll link to it above. Once you watch it, you'll have a better understanding of what I'm talking about in this video. To quickly review, when the Fed lowers interest rates, it affects the risk premium of every asset class. It lowers the return on bonds and widens the spread between safe assets like cash and bonds and riskier assets like stocks. The larger spread means that riskier assets become more attractive compared to safe ones. And because of the lower return on safe assets, investors have to move out on the risk curve into riskier assets to maintain their returns. This causes riskier assets like stocks to get bid up driving their valuations higher. And when valuations increase, expected future returns go lower. Eventually, risk premium spreads get pulled really tight together like you see in this chart. Valuations get so high that expected returns in stocks almost equal cash, but with much higher volatility. This happens during the late cycle phase of the short-term debt cycle. And by this point, no one wants to hold stocks, which is why we get bear markets as investors sell their stocks and allocate towards cash and bonds. Now let's actually measure the risk premium in the current market. First, let's look at GMO's seven-year asset class real return forecast. This forecast looks at current asset valuations using various measures of return on capital relative to earnings multiples. It then compares them to their average historical real returns over the following seven-year period. The model currently predicts that U.S. large cap stocks will return negative 4.7% after inflation over the next seven years. Bonds will return negative 1% and cash 0.4%. Only U.S. cash emerging market stocks and debt have positive, although very low, expected real returns over the next seven years. Next, we can look at the inverse of the CAPE minus the rate on 10-year bonds adjusted for inflation. And a big thank you to the good folks at Top Down Charts for this chart. I'll link to their website in the comments. But this chart shows how the spread is tightening in the U.S. But it's still 1.5% wider than where it was at the top of the last bull market and over 3% wider than the negative levels it reached in 2000. A slight drop in the earnings yield and a 1% rise in interest rates will put us at levels that have marked the end of previous bull markets. We can also look at the rolling 5-year average annual return to equities relative to 2-year bonds. In this chart, the higher the line is, the tighter the spread is. And you can see we're at similar levels reached at the top of the last two cycles. All of this data shows that we're in the late cycle phase of this bull. But that phase lasts between 18 and 30 months. And we're closer to the middle than the end. This puts the next bear market around 12 to 18 months from now. Now when risk premium spreads tighten, stocks become extra sensitive to inflation and interest rates. In this chart, you can see the direct relationship between stocks and interest rates. When bond yields rise, liquidity tightens, which puts pressure on stocks. When yields fall, liquidity loosens and stocks run higher. Stocks and bonds are always competing for capital, and that's why they usually move inversely to one another. When yields move higher, bonds become more attractive to investors. Capital flows out of stocks and into bonds. As interest rates keep increasing, bonds will just become more attractive, and more capital will keep flowing into them. But right now, earnings growth and valuations are still supportive of risk assets. There's still room for risk premium spreads to compress, which is bullish for stocks. This bull is old, but it's not over. Like I said before, the next bear market probably won't arrive for another 12 to 18 months. How much longer do you think this bull will run? Let me know in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit that bell for notifications of new videos. Markets are wild right now. Remember to stay fallible out there. I'll talk to you soon.